Good morning and welcome on this Sunday after uh, Christmas. Hope everybody had a good and joyous and Merry Christmas uh, this year. With all that has been going on, uh, it is good to have the, the pleasure and uh, the, the sense of God's presence as we celebrate the birth of, of the Lord Jesus. I really don't have uh, any announcements. I want to thank Pam and Len again for uh, sharing with us today. And I am ready for us to begin our worship together. So let us do so. Let's share together as Pam leads us in our prelude. Thank you so much. That was wonderful, wonderful. Music is really the idea behind my call to worship that I want to share this morning. Our music leaders, and especially our songwriters, who have put so much into the writing of, 
of the hymns over the centuries, they actually, in music and hymns, proclaim our faith and the basis for us to gather together in worship. Like the wonderful hymn that I had planned for today, the words go like this, and the songwriter certainly proclaims our faith. This is my father's world. Oh, let not me ever forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. It's wonderful to sing that hymn, but it is the basis for us to think about our gathering today. Let us pray. God, we would take but a moment now to confess that indeed sometimes we overlook or get sidetracked because we, we confess that our problems so often dominate our thinking and sap our resources. The more we focus upon our own troubles, the more depressed we seemingly become. And your invitation is so clear. Come, rest. So Lord, lift us out of our self-concerns and focus our attention this morning upon your word of life. Renew within us this great desire that comes to us as we're reminded of the birth of your son. Help us and give to us that desire to accept your gift with heart, mind, and strength. Let us believe the good news that comes to us. Jesus was not given to us to condemn the world, but rather, as the apostle said, Jesus came to show the love of God to the world. That's the good news. Let us believe this good news and continue the celebration of the birth of our Lord. Glory to God. I have a very short scripture passage that is more often heard on Palm Sunday than at any other time of the year, but yet it's, I think, very good for us to hear this morning. It comes from the prophet Zechariah, ninth chapter, the 12th verse. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope, Today, I declare that I will restore to you double. And again, we would hear a passage. It's very fitting for today, but one that's probably heard a little bit more often after the new year from the Apostle Paul. From the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing 
in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. To the praise of his glory. Every year, for the last 10 or 12 years or so, my wife and our beloved dogs would, well, we'd hold this continuous ritual that occurred. We'd jump into our car, and then we would drive and, and head towards River Road to hold the, the ritual that starts for our family sometime every single December. As we drive along River Road, Betty and I watch and wait for signs of bird life, but not any old bird life, but the life of that majestic creature that has become the actual mascot of our nation. And of course, we, we know it's the eagle. Eagles, of course, for years now have, have come and they have taken roosts and they do so along the, the river shoreline and they make nests. And sometimes we've been fortunate enough to actually see them swoop down in the river and go after some fish. And they do this every single December up to and including February, and sometimes a couple of the years we've actually seen them still in March. This year we saw our very first eagles on December the 8th. Last year I can remember it was December the 10th. But this year it was December the 8th, but we've seen few since that day. And yet the ritual continues and has continued every single day this month. So deep is our hoping to see those perched friends of ours. So deep is our hoping that at moments hope itself drives back that continuous sense of watching as we drive along. And in our mind, if nowhere else, what we hope to happen does happen. For there 
they are perched or swooping through the air. Which is simply a funny way of saying that I absolutely understand what St. Paul is saying in our letter to the Ephesians this morning. That lesson for today by Paul simply offers this promise of a life. To be in Christ, he says, is to to live victoriously in faith, never quite knowing, never quite hearing or seeing. There's doubt, hard on the heels of every single belief. Fear, hard on the heels of every single sense of hope. But there's something else, something worth waiting for, says the faith. Something unseen and decisive is here as well. God, Paul says, is at work. God is at work throughout the universe in Christ. Now that's the primary message, I think, that most of the week's Steve and I and other preachers have. It's the primary message I was trying to say two weeks ago as I talked about our Christian response to the corona pandemic. I know uh, some thought that I was saying, oh, just have faith and you'll get through any of your problems. And that's not what I was saying. What I was saying was if we would do what we can do in preparing ourselves for problems and then act as a Christian about the problems by not overreacting to fear and by not underreacting because of what others think or say, if we did those things, we would maintain our religious integrity during it during this whole pandemic thing. And our character, you see, would absolutely shine. Albert Schweitzer showed the world this great example of of this shining example of what Christianity, you see, is, is at its best. In his jungle hospital in Africa, he he was once summoned from a conference to attend a sick woman. And as he rose to leave, Dr. Schweitzer said, it is good to be reminded now and then that even in a world struggling with the momentous issues, the individual still has problems. However much concerned I am, Dr. Schweitzer says, However much concerned I am with the problems of evil in the world, I have confidence in the power and the truth of the Spirit. Therefore, I believe in the future of mankind. And isn't that exactly what it means to be in Christ? Isn't part of what it means to be in Christ is this confidence that This is still God's universe. And that God is still at work in and through and behind the events that crash upon us. He's made known to us the hidden purpose, Paul says. You know, sometimes I think it's a well-hidden revelation. Well-hidden, we often think. But he has made it known. And to the ear of faith, his purpose does somehow seemingly come out, does it? Well, a little bit earlier I gave you that one really, really short line from the prophet, uh, the Old Testament lesson from the prophet Zechariah. And Zechariah centers on, and the whole thing of this one 
little passage is that one little phrase. He, he calls the faith community prisoners of hope. A reference to the faith community, particularly of his time. And what's the fascinating thing that I find about not only Zechariah, but about all of the latter-day uh, prophets of the Old Testament is that they, they put the truth in this beautiful and powerful way. And that's because the one thing the prophets were absolutely convinced of is that the world that we know of did not come into being by accident. At the center and the source of creation was a purposeful God who held the nations, in other words, who, who held time and circumstances in his very control, and without whose help no nation could hope to prosper. The Hebrews, of which Zechariah was in the latter part of, the Hebrews had been devastated many times before Zechariah came on the scene, many times before the generation in which Zechariah lived. But they had not given up on the faith. There was still a remnant of believers, even after all of the devastations that had occurred. Just as there had been in Elijah's day, and just as there had been with Moses and Joshua in the wilderness. So long as that remnant, you see, remained, they believed God would not forsake them. Later, there was this announcement of the coming of a person, the chosen one of God. There would be a person who would come who would be the answer to the world's evil. The government would be upon his shoulders and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace. He would employ the hopes and the fears of an entire people. In him, the purpose and the promise of God, you see, would be fulfilled. And so it was that evil was to be overcome. A purpose, a promise, and a per person. That is what we celebrated on Christmas Eve with our service. Celebration of the purpose of God made into a promise and fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. And I suppose, well, I suppose that action can only make sense if we are waiting and watching, you see, for something better. Story has it that two men were standing in New York City. It was the beginning of the Christmas shopping season, of course, before this last year in the COVID pandemic. Nonetheless, it's right before the Christmas shopping season. One of the men is irritated by having to wait for the heavy traffic to clear so that they could cross the street. This town is totally and utterly disorganized. Look at all the traffic. Something ought to be done about it. And the other man, of course, is, well, he's feeling a little bit different. He's a little bit more philosophical. He says, you know, it's just amazing. Think about it. There was a baby born of, a, of peasant parents in a little out-of-the-way place halfway around the world. The parents had no money, no social standing, and yet 2,000 years later, that little baby creates a traffic jam on Fifth Avenue. Amazing. But that irritates you, he tells his friend. 
it should fascinate you. <laughs> Good words. A wonderful thought, isn't it? And I suppose those words and that thought can only speak to us if indeed we are waiting and watching for something better. You know, it's, I think it's safe to say that 2020 has been a year that no one has wanted. However, that doesn't mean that it has to be a lost year. I've heard some people refer to 2020 as the great reset, a time to take a look at our lives and to inventory how to live in order to become the people God calls us to be. And what can help us is the usage of what is right there in front of us. Earlier this month, I, I watched one of those numerous Charles Dickens story of, of Ebenezer Scrooge. You know, um, the story of that cranky old bachelor who runs his business as this insensitive tyrant going around ordering everyone to do his bidding regardless of their feelings or their needs. And then after he, Scrooge, sees his future and his selfish, bitter heart is kind of mellowed, he asks, what can I do to change the future? And the spirit of Christmas past shows him, of course, Tiny Tim, the family, sitting there in the humble surroundings and they're not having a Christmas dinner. No presents. Just sort of, well, kind of sad, especially as you hear the news about Tiny Tim needing an operation. And Scrooge knows what he must do. He has a sense of remorse. But remorse, you see, is not enough. He must also act. And you know what? The new year is perfect for us after Christmas. It's perfect for exploring the possibility of a reset. But that requires some work on our parts, doesn't it? I saw a picture of a, a specially made shirt. Etched on it was a poem that went like this. If you would have some worthwhile plans, you've got to watch your can'ts and cans. You can't aim low and then rise high. You can't succeed if you don't try. You can't go wrong and come out right. You can't love sin and walk in the light. You can't throw time and means away and live sublime from day to day. You can be great if you'll be good and do God's will as all folks should. You can ascend life's upward road, although you bear a heavy load. You can be honest, truthful, clean, by turning from the low and mean. You can uplift the souls of men by words and deeds, or by your pen. So watch your can't, and watch your cans, and watch your walks, and watch your stands, and watch the way you talk and act, and do not take the false for fact, and watch the things that mar or make, for life is great to every man who lives to do the best he can. You know, I... 
I saw that poem and I thought to myself, that would be absolutely great to be used in the upcoming inaugural address by President-elect Biden three weeks from now. If nothing else, it certainly would be a reset for 2021, wouldn't it? If nothing else, it could be a rallying point for bringing about some political health to our divided nation. And so I conclude with a thought that comes from a little chapel in the hills of the Scottish Highlands. There's a sign chiseled in Gaelic on the front door. Translated into English, it says, come as you are, but don't leave as you come. A Christmas reset for this new year of 2021 says to us, come as you are, but don't leave as you came. Take a look at the can and can't you carry with you. But you know what? It's going to affect us just as certainly as it's going to affect the coming year. But more importantly, remember, as followers of the God of Jesus Christ, we are waiting and watching for something better. For ourselves and from ourselves. Let us pray. Patient Creator, you are tireless in speaking to us, and your love opens the door for us to come to you. As this year concludes and the new year progresses on, help us to keep in mind the popular saying from recent years that goes like this, whether you think you can or can't, you're right. May we have an I can attitude today, one that is based on the blessing of your presence and grace Continue to give more light to the church by the instruction of the Spirit speaking in the Word is written. And as further insights are found in our communal life in the midst of the world, help us to show our thanksgiving in the continual reexamination of conscience that we may live justly, show mercy, and walk in humility before you. Like the great gift of Christmas, Jesus the Christ, your son. The great gift we truly would celebrate. And certainly in whose name we would pray. Amen.
certainly we all have much that are on our, it's upon our minds and hearts as we would turn to the Lord in prayer. But I ask you to take those things and share them in spirit as we come to the throne of the Lord now. Let us pray. Patient creator and great persuasive spirit, you are tireless in speaking to us, and your love opens the door for us to come to you. May we have an I can attitude today based on the poem that goes, a new year is approaching, what does it hold for me? It may bring joy or sorrow, oh God, what shall it be? Sometimes my heart is anxious, I think, I should know the way into the future, each step that I will go. But you and your great wisdom must plan for me my all, lest all your children falter and miss your perfect call. Dear Lord, I pray for guidance in all I say and do. And then the year upcoming, will truly honor you. We are learning, O oh Lord, so slowly life's true values. Surely Christmas would teach us the unforgettable lesson of the things that matter most, the ties that bind the structure of the family upon which our country and all the world rests. The love that we have for one another, which binds the whole creation to your footstool, your throne. We're learning slowly, but, oh God, we thank you that we are learning. So may Christmas linger with us, even as you are beside us the whole year through. Hailing the birth of your son, we we commemorate a life that was to mature in wisdom and stature until it embraced the whole globe with its love and its power. So grant that we return to our everyday tasks like the shepherds, glorifying and praising you for all that we have seen and heard. Help each one of us during this moment of silence, to keep the Christmas miracle aglow, to shed its warmth, to speak its message during all of the bleak days of winter, so that when we come out of this winter, we would share together in the common joy of turning to you naturally and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And just as I began the service by wishing that you had received a good and joyous and happy and Merry Christmas, I conclude by wishing you to have a good and happy and upcoming New Year.
And as we walk with the Lord and remember all that God has done and continues to do in the abundance of care, we shall prosper in this upcoming year. Peace be unto you, and may, may we all sense the peace that passes all understanding from the love of our God. Amen. Thank you.